Hello everyone! Welcome back for another lesson. In this lesson we will talk about electrolytes. So let's dive in right away. First we need to address electrical conductivity. So that's a measure of the substance that we're studying, its ability to allow the flow of electric current. So some will conduct electricity very well, some not. An example is pure water or distilled water. Pure water does not conduct electricity. Why is this? Because there are no electrolytes in the water. So you need to have certain substances that allow for electricity to flow that are dissolved in the water for water to conduct electricity. So tap water would conduct electricity. It has those electrolytes present. We're going to take a look at what electrolytes are in uh, a moment. But so that's the difference between a pure water, which doesn't conduct because it doesn't have electrolytes dissolved in it and other substances that may have electrolytes and that will conduct electricity. So if we have a solution that contains those electrolytes, we call this an electrolytic solution. Now, when we put an electrolyte in, let's say, water, so those electrolytes will dissolve and as a second step, they will separate. So they'll break into two parts, two ions. So one positive, one negative. So the first one, the positive is a cation. The negative part is called an anion. And you can see that I, I underlined the T and the N. It's just a memory aid to remember which is which. So N for negative and the T is a little bit like a plus sign. So cation is the positive part. So when they're together, as a substance, they form an ionic bond because you have two ions that are bonded together, right? The positive attracts the negative or vice versa. So when these are put, let's say, in water, they dissociate, they break into two halves, and they form what we call an electrolytic dissociation and an electrolytic solution. Okay, so there's different substances that allow... Sorry... So there are different substances that are electrolytes. There are three that we will talk about today. So there are acids, bases, and salts. And I will define these in a few moments. Now, electrolytic dissociation is not a chemical reaction. It's a physical one. Why? Because if we let the water evaporate, then your cation and your anion will recombine together and form the original substance. Okay, so it is reversible. So that's why it's physical and not chemical. So we have an example here. We have NaCl, which is table salt. So table salt, when we put it in water, will dissociate into Na plus and Cl minus. It's two ions. If you don't remember why it's plus and minus, you're going to have to go back to a previous lesson where, where I talk about um, ions and what charge they carry when they separate from one another. So NaCl put in water forms Na plus, Cl minus. If we were to let the water evaporate, these two would attract each other, recombine to form NaCl solid. Okay, so it's those ions that conduct the electricity in a solution. So you can have a solution that will not conduct at all. So in this case, we have an example here, we have ethanol. So ethanol is a type of alcohol. The substance does not separate, does not dissociate when put in water. So it will dissolve, so your bigger grains are gonna become smaller, so the different, the various grains will separate, so they become uh, invisible to the naked eye, but the molecules themselves don't split up, so they don't dissociate. So this will not conduct electricity. As you can see here, the light bulb is not lit. If we have KCl, KCl will split into its positive and negative counterparts, so the cation and the anion. And then if you have a setup like this with two electrodes, well, the negative ion will be attracted to the cathode or positive electrode, and the positive ion, the cation, will be attracted to the anode, the negative electrode. And this movement of ions, combined with the movement of electrons that it creates over here and the wires, will allow for electricity to flow and that will light up your light bulb. We have another example here, acetic acid, which is vinegar. You can see here that vinegar does not break apart or dissociate as much. So you only have a few ions present and the other molecules stay whole. 
So as you can see here, there's less electricity that flows. So the more ions are created, so the more dissociation there is, the more electricity can flow, right? So higher dissociation creates more ions, which means more flow of electricity. Less ions comes from a lower dissociation and there's less electricity that can flow. Now, I talked about three families of substances that can conduct electricity when dissolved in water. The first one is acids. So how do we recognize an acid when we look at a formula? Well, there's always an H present in the formula. Why? Because it's that H that makes the acid acidic. And that's the part, or one of the parts anyways, that will conduct electricity. But the H is really important. That's what makes it acidic. Okay, so an acid will dissociate into an H plus ion and some kind of anion. And the more H's, or H plus I should say, are present, the more acidic a substance will be. It's always the same rule. More ions, more electricity. So same thing here. More ions, more acidic, more electricity can, be, um, can flow. So if we look here at the first example, we have HCl. So HCl will dissociate into... H plus and Cl minus. If we look at the second example, H2SO4, when it gets put in water, will separate into the two halves. So we have some H plus here. How many? Well, two. Two will be created. Okay, so they will completely separate. And then we have SO4, which is one of the polyatomic ions. SO4 will remain as is, and that will become your anion. Then we have acetic acid, which is vinegar. You can see here it has a slightly different uh, format. The H is at the end. So there are some acids that will end with COOH, and the H, which is part of the COOH uh, part of the molecule, that's the acidic part. So the H will detach to form H+, and the rest of the molecule will form the anion. Okay. So if you see a formula that starts with an H, or a formula that ends with COOH, right away you should think acid, okay? And again, more ions, stronger acid, more dissociation, more electricity. So that's the first family. Second family, bases. So bases always contain a hydroxide ion, right? This is one of your polyatomic ions, OH minus. Okay, so that's what makes it basic or alkaline. Again, I'll just jump to the bottom. The more dissociation there is, the more ions you form, in this case particularly more OH- ions, so the more electricity will flow, and because these um, are present in a base, this means it'll be a stronger base. So when we talk about a stronger base, we talk about a base that dissociates more than another. So if we look at our three examples, we have NaOH. When it puts, gets put in water, it separates in two. So we're going to have the cation, which is Na+, and then we have the hydroxide ion, which is the basic part of the molecule. Magnesium hydroxide will split into in two parts, and it will split into magnesium and OH-. But you can see here there are two OH-minuses, so they will completely separate into two hydroxide ions. Then we have ammonium hydroxide. This one is a little bit of an exception, okay? Because normally you have a metal followed by the hydroxide. In this case, we don't have a metal, but we have a cation. So this still forms a base, okay? So as long as you have two ions, one of which is hydroxide, that would be a base. So it splits in two into... Uh, ammonium and hydroxide. So that's for bases. Last part, salts. We've talked about salts when we looked at ionic bonds. I may or may not have mentioned it, but when we talked about ionic bonds, I only gave you examples of salts. So what is a salt made of? It's made of a metallic uh, part and a non-metallic part. Okay, so the metallic part will be the positive or uh, ion or cation, the non-metallic will form the negative ion or anion. So first example, we have NaCl. We saw it before. It splits into the metallic part, the non-metallic part. So Na 
plus and Cl minus. Silver nitrate. So again, we split in two, into the metallic part and the non-metallic part. So the metallic part is silver, Ag plus, non-metallic, NO3. So we know that this is one of our polyatomic ions, NO3 minus. CaCl2 splits in two. So metallic, non-metallic. The metallic part is calcium that carries a charge of plus two. And we have two chlorines, so they will again separate into two atoms of chlorine, each one carrying a charge of minus one. Now, I don't know if I my on my other pages it showed this, but remember, this is actually a reversible reaction. So all my arrows should be double because if I let the water evaporate, these ions will recombine together to form the original substance. Okay, so I'm just reinforcing the fact that these are not chemical reactions, they are physical reactions the dissociation part I'm talking about. Okay, so that's it for electrolytes. If you have questions, as usual, uh, leave them in the comment section below. And otherwise, I will see you soon for your next lesson. Until then, take care.